Welcome back to Bohemian Mathematics. Today we will look at line graphs and how to draw a line graph from a set of data. First, let's look at a few graphs. This is a graph showing books sold over several weeks. Here's a graph showing cookie sales throughout the week. Here is a graph of temperature change over a period of time. And here is a graph of hot dogs sold per day. All of these are known as line graphs. And line graphs often show a trend over a period of time, which means it shows us how things fluctuate up and down over a series of days, weeks, months, and so on, usually, but not always. And so let's look at the following data. What if we wanted to take a survey of cars sold in May and we noted the different colors? We could put down all of the data like this, but it doesn't help us until we turn it into a frequency table. This helps us to organize the categories a little better and we can see how many fall into each category. So how do we change that data and convert that data into a line graph that looks something like this that makes it a little easier to see how things are moving up and down? We can create a line graph by looking at the frequency table and following these steps. First, we need to determine how many categories there are. And in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six categories. Next, we determine the highest and lowest numbers in the table. We can look at the numbers and we can see 43 is the largest or the highest, and 13 is the smallest or the lowest number. And we use our graph and we label the x and y axes. We place a mark at each point and we connect the points with one line after we're done. Let's see how that works. So here's our blank graph and we have our frequency table off to the left. Let's start with white and we can see that it's 13 for white. So we find white on the graph. At the bottom, it's our first category. We've placed our numbers along the y-axis going from 0 to 50 because we see the largest number in our table is 43. And so we've evenly spaced those out so that we can access all of these numbers straight up to 43. And we have our colors along the bottom, white to green. And so we locate white. We find where 13 is, which is between 10 and 15, somewhere here. And we draw a line across and up at the same time from white. And where they intersect, that's where we place our point. And so we've located the point now for white at 13. Let's look at red, which is 21. So we find red. We find where 21 is, which is a little above 20. And where 21 and red intersect, we place a dot or a point. We continue doing this now with black. 37 is between 35 and 40. And where they intersect above black, we place our point. And now we go to blue, which is 27, which is between 25 and 30. And we draw a line, and where they intersect, we place our point. Now to silver, which is 43, which is the largest number, which is between 40 and 45. And where silver and 43 intersect, we place our point. And lastly with green, which is 16, we locate 16, which is right above 15. And where that intersects with green, we place our final point. And now we have all of our points, and all we have to do now is connect each point. White to red, red to black, black to blue, blue to silver, and lastly, silver to green. And now we have our line graph in plain sight. As we said before, line graphs help us to notice trends. And so trends sometimes show us an upward direction, a downward direction. This helps us to understand more what's happening in the graph. If we look at this graph, people in a store, between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m., we can see something trending up and trending down depending on what time of the day it is. And so at 10 a.m., there were two people. At 11 a.m., 5 people, which has increased. At 12 p.m., 10 people, which is even more. And 1 p.m., 22 people. We can see on the graph it keeps going higher and higher. After 1 p.m., at 2 p.m., we see that it comes back down to 15. And at 3 p.m., down to 5. At 4 p.m., 4. 5 p.m., there's still 4. And 6 p.m., 3 people. So we can see the trends going up and going down throughout the day. In this line graph, we have students over several years. And again, we can see how the numbers are trending down or up. In 2013, there were 1,000 students. The next year, 2014, there were 900. 2015, there were 500. We can see it's trending downward. 2016 is 600, going back up a little bit. 2017 is 200, which is downward trend. 
and 2018 is 500, which is an upward trend again. This graph shows a trend from January till June, and in January there were 40. In February there were 55, which is an upward trend. March is 50, a little downward. April 70 going up again, May 80 going up again, and in June trending back down to 40. If you want to see more videos just like this one, like, subscribe, and share to the Bahamian Mathematics YouTube channel. And now it's quiz time. Which color was liked least in the graph below? Time's up. You can see in the graph that the color liked the least was the dot at the very bottom, which is white. And question number two, how tall was she at six years old? Time's up. If you find on the graph at the bottom six years old, and you go up to the graph, and I go across to the left, you can see between 40 and 50 is 55 inches. Question three. Sales increased between weeks three and four by how much? You have five seconds. Time's up. If you locate weeks three and four, you can see week three was 60. Week four was between 80 and 100, which is 90. And the difference between 60 and 90 is 30. Question four. In which months was it seven degrees Celsius? You have five seconds. Time's up. Here is between six and eight is seven. And if we look across to the graph, we can see there are two months, February and March. And final question, question five, which month had the highest sales? Time's up. We can see from the graph the highest point is right here, which is August, our final answer. And now you've solved the mystery of creating line graphs. Well done.